what I want to share about is how, uh, you know, what, what started off as a sacrifice uh, did help me uh, understand and see the revelation of God's power and glory in my life and in the lives of the people around me. Now, about a couple of months back, uh, I made a decision to make daily visits to the Blessed Sacrament at Bambulam Cross. Now, for me to make that decision is a little difficult because I usually start work at 9 in the morning and go up till about 8.30 in the night. And that's about like continuous. Like, and it's like most days I work that many hours. So for me to uh, commit an hour every day, I mean like to move from a place where I am and to go uh, to a secluded place uh, to the Bliss Sacrament every day was a difficult task. Uh, and since after we make every godly decisions, God-fearing decision, uh, favoring decisions, there's always a test of endurance. So I had about like a couple of hurdles that I had to overcome. Uh, one of them being that I had to cut my lunch break, uh, which is about an hour to about five minutes. So basically, if you are like walk into the staff room, I work in Guadalupe College. Uh, if I walk into the staff, uh, walk into the staff room. At about 12.30, you will see my mouth like this. Basically, I'm stuffing my lunch into my mouth. Like, I have to finish my lunch in like five minutes because I need to be at the cross. Um, that was not as big a sacrifice as what I had to face uh, after I made that decision. The second being my very unhappy friends. Uh, uh, especially unhappy because they missed me during this ta time of, you know, we used to have this get-together time during the lunch break. And all my friends got together and they would always miss me. So they were constantly complaining of how I don't spend time with them and I just run away every lunch break. Um, I think more than that, what really used to prick me is uh, my mocking colleagues. Um, say mocking colleagues, uh, I, I, do, I don't know whether you all know that there's a mental asylum just opposite the cross. Okay, so... One of my colleagues used to keep teasing me almost every day, saying that uh, you don't go to the cross, you go to the mental asylum every day to get your daily dose of medicines. Or, uh, you know, uh, things like I had one of my friends actually hold me up and say, you know, you're being too dependent on God that you have to run every single day to tell him your stories. And uh, I do realize that you know that Jesus is God and he's not human and you need to spend time with humans rather than God. Um, yeah, things like that. And like how Savio says, in all things, God works for good of those who love him and whom he has called according to his purpose. So I knew that, uh, that he would, you know, uh, I could do all these things through him who strengthened me. And according to James 1-2, it said that we should be fortunate. Uh, we should find ourselves fortunate if we come across such trials. So I kept up continued. Now, the fruit that I saw through uh, all this was amazing. Uh, I suddenly saw a change in myself. A change was like, I used to be a pretty anxious person. Uh, I became much calmer, uh, more joyful, peaceful, to the extent that my superiors would, you know, come up to, an, uh, come up to me and say, uh, what have you done to your face? Why are you glowing? Or have you met someone? Or are you getting married tomorrow? Uh, and I would just say no, uh, uh, shake my head and say no, I'm not doing anything. I mean, just this one thing. Or uh, the change was not only in me. Uh, the change that I saw was in the people around me. These same uh, mocking colleagues suddenly started getting very curious of, you know, what was happening to me. And they would keep, uh, they come up and they ask me like, you know, uh, why are you so joyful? I mean, how can you be joyful in this situation? And like, like you're overworked, and like already taken five patients already and how are you still joyful and dancing about the place? Um, I said, if uh, you already want to know, come, come with me to the cross. And it did work actually. Uh, the nuns there, uh, there was this one nun who came up to me after a couple of months and she asked me, she's like, do you, all do you want to join us? Because you bring in more people to us than we do. So I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, 
Yeah, uh, I can't even count the number of people that I have taken to the cross and they've experienced the same kind of peace and joy uh, that I experience there almost every single day. Um, uh, that's not it. Um, I found a lot of my students and uh, my colleagues, friends who would start revealing their prayer requests to me so that I could lift them up in prayer during my time of prayer. So, uh, coming to the point that sacrifice, uh, what started off as sacrifice at the beginning uh, really did help me uh, see the power of prayer and sacrifice. Um, by the time, you know, I've come, I felt that I'm a little more closer to God. And not just that, I, I wasn't really doing anything much with the people around me. I didn't have to tell them. I mean, like if now in the lunch break you do go searching for me in the college, they will say she's gone to meet her boyfriend. So, I feel that uh, sacrifice really helped me and I feel that prayer is uh, the cornerstone of our Catholic faith. And I think there is no better place to search for Jesus than in the Blessed Sacrament. Thank you.